Hello. Long time no see. I'm Irene from Girl Talks Fish, and it's been a while. I had a little bit of analysis paralysis on what video to do first since many months of not filming, but I think the best thing would be, obviously my tanks are not looking the best as I was, you know, struggling with some health issues. And I figured what better way to come back than to show you how to fix an aquarium that has been kind of neglected besides, you know, occasional fertilizer, obviously fish food going into it, the lights on a timer, but we definitely had some algae growth. So let me show you step by step with my 20 gallon high and what's going on there. So this is my 20 gallon high aquarium community planted tank. And I used to call it the back to basics planted tank because I basically put all the beginner, low light, super easy plants I could find in this tank to see what I could get to grow. And this is what we have left. One plant that you do not see here are the floating plants. I had a ton of salvinia in here and they just were not doing well. And I think the problem is the Salvinia really wanted highlight and then Nubius, even when it was kind of shaded out by the Salvinia, was not happy with that. It was getting a lot of algae growth. And so I decided to sacrifice the Salvinia and I'm going to try to adjust the lighting so that algae doesn't grow. It's low enough that the algae doesn't grow on the Nubius. I'm actually pretty happy with the results from my tweaking the lighting so far. So right now it is at like 10% brightness of the, um, I have the aquarium co-op LED light. So super, super dim, although it doesn't look that way on camera. And then it's only on for seven hours currently per day, but I'm, I'm hoping to increase that. And then I'm not sure if you can see in the back, but I just got another dwarf aquarium lily to put in the back and hopefully these um, plants will actually grow lily pads that reach all the way to the surface. And I'm hoping it'll be easier to maintain that kind of cover at the surface of the water without as much maintenance. All right, it is time to do my first big regular maintenance. Like I plan to do maintenance on this tank every week from now on. Um, to just really get on top of things. So first thing I'm gonna do is, I already added root tabs recently for all the cryptocorians in this tank, but I wanna really make sure that this dwarf aquarium lily in the back gets all the nutrients it needs. So I'm gonna give it extra root tabs. The reason why I let the mulm kind of get out of control was because honestly, I just wanted, I mean, I do have a lot of heavy root feeders in this tank. So I figured the mulm and the fish poop and all that stuff could get into the gravel. But at this point, there's way too much mulm. So I definitely need to get rid of the excess. This is my super long 50 foot python uh, siphon, basically. And so the trick I learned from Corey of Aquarium Co-op is, see if you let, you can suck up a lot of mulm this way, but sometimes you want to like squeeze the tube a little bit so that you can still suck up mulm, but maybe not suck up water as quickly. So I'm gonna try to do that where needed. I don't know, I kind of like it full power. Okay, now comes for the fun part. So I said previously that yes, there was a ton of blackbeard algae on this Anubius previously, but I would like to, to disappear faster. So what I'm gonna do is try to lift most of this, ooh, this is a big Anubius. Try to lift most of it out of the water and then spray, this is a spray bottle I have right here. I'm gonna spray it with hydrogen peroxide that I put in here. All right, while this hydrogen peroxide is soaking, I'm gonna to try to clean the sponge filter. And we're back. That sponge filter was disgusting. <laughs> Remind me never to wait that long. All right, it is time to add the water back in. And I've got the Python water change system. So previously the other end of this tube was at 
it was outside, and now it's connected to my sink. And that is it for today. And so I think from now on, you know, previously I definitely took a step back from my fish keeping hobby, but I'm going to have to be a lot more diligent if I want to get rid of this algae more quickly. And so that's going to involve things like continue to vacuum out as much mulm as possible. And of course, definitely it looks like I'm going to have to clean that other sponge filter next week. So I will let you know what happens. All right, we're at week two of revamping this tank and there's some improvements and there's some stuff gone wrong. So let me show you. So good news, bad news, the new, the larger Nubius in the back that I sprayed, definitely the algae is dying. However, I was definitely way too aggressive with the amount of hydrogen peroxide that I sprayed on it. Cause you can see this leaf over here is uh, definitely not doing well. However, I'm not too worried because you can see some new leaves growing in the middle and this plant has always grown tons of new leaves. So hopefully it will quickly replace them. Another thing that happened is because I did a, I think it was like a 40% water change and then I added fertilizer, some of the crypts are not happy. So you can see this one over here in this corner is starting to melt. So I definitely don't want to do a water change today. Just kind of minimal changes to the water chemistry will be good for now. One thing I did commit to doing was to adding root tabs every single week to this dwarf aquarium lily. And I'm not sure if it's rooted yet or not. It doesn't look like it's rooted. The bulb seems kind of wobbly. The aquarium lid is kind of grody. So let's see if I can remove as much stuff off as possible. And that way it won't be blocking any of the light that is supposed to be reaching the plants. Well, since I have the lid off anyways, actually this is probably a good time to try to clean all these nasty mineral deposits off. So, oh, it looks like they're coming off fairly easy. Another thing that I heard online that might help with algae on Anubius leaves is if I use these like algae scrubber uh, sponges and try to gently scrub the algae off. So let me see if that will help. And yeah, this one has brown algae on it and it came right off when I wiped it. That's pretty cool. I don't know if I want to go to this much effort normally. I mean, <laughs> I'm literally wiping algae off of individual leaves, but it does look really nice. Okay. The last major think thing I think I'm going to do is basically get this catch cup and collect any extra debris. Like I see a, like a bulb over there, some random large items that aren't and even maybe rotting leaves, as well as there's a lot of java fern that were made by little plantlets and then now they've kind of grown up and so I want to just glue them to a stone or something like that. So I'm just going to collect everything and put it in this catch cup. Okay, you probably saw that I got lots of java fern, but they're all kind of individual plantlets. Most of them seem to be doing really healthy, but I just don't want them randomly everywhere in the tank. So my idea is I'm going to lay them out on this paper towel and then glue them together in some kind of fashion onto this rock. Ta-da! My horribly <laughs> monstrous tentacle monster of a java fern rock. Let's put it in the tank. Okay, and there you have it. I didn't think there was going to be that much to do on week two, but there obviously was. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how this tank continues to improve, and I will see you guys next week. Hello, everyone. It is week three, and I'm looking at this tank. I can see improvements. I can see things I want to do. Today, I would probably normally do another gravel vacuum of the tank just to get more of that mulm out. But I am just feeling kind of down today. Um, our One of our pets passed away. We had to euthanize her and I'm just feeling really down. So I'm kind of going to try to do the dare, bare minimum, but I committed to doing tape maintenance on this 20 gallon high every single week. And so that's what I'm going to do.
whether I feel like it or not. First thing I'm going to do is what I should have done last first thing last week, which is measure the water. So I know exactly how much fertilizer to add. That looks to be about 25 ppm nitrate to me. So I'm going to add about the same amount of fertilizer that I did last week, which was two easy green and two potassium. But I'll do that at the very end. The dwarf aquarium lily seems to have gotten a little bigger. I don't know if it's rooted yet, but I am going to continue putting more root tabs in every single week. So we're currently at a rate of four, and that way by the time it does root, there will be plenty of nutrients down there. Since I'm in this corner of the aquarium, I'm going to go ahead and try to... I want to see if I can try to clean this sponge filter without um, taking out this airline tubing on the airline uh, air collar because it's kind of difficult to you know all airline tubing doesn't matter what brand tends to get hardened over time and then I hate having to try to put it back on the sponge filter because a lot of times it doesn't fit anymore. So now, now that it's been a couple of weeks since I too, uh, accidentally aggressively put too much hydrogen peroxide on the large Anubius, I don't even know what kind of Anubius this is. I bought this at a, I think a fish club, but now they have like really turned brown, the ones that aren't gonna make it. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut them off at the base so that this poor Anubius can really focus on recovering and growing new leaves that actually have a chance of making it. I do see some leaves where the algae did successfully die from the hydrogen peroxide, but didn't exactly kill the entire leaf. So I'm gonna go ahead and wipe those areas off with this algae scrubber sponge. This is honestly why I make a plan and I write it down because I just keep forgetting every little thing and don't want to forget that fertilizer. Got the easy green all in one. I think it recommends one pump per 10 gallons, which is what I'm doing right here. And then because I, so I have a bunch of Anubias and Java fern, I'm going to add a little extra potassium, which easy green already has a ton of, but just want to make sure that they do well. <laughs> and there we go. Three weeks down. Let's see how far we can get until next week. See you then. Hi guys, it is week four and unfortunately I am pretty sick. So I am not going to do a lot of on camera maintenance today, but I did still want to wrap up this video and talk about the tank. I just tested the water first thing and it had 25 ppm nitrate. So I think I'm on a good routine of two pumps of easy green, two pumps of easy potassium every week. You can see the substrate at the front is really clean of mulm and I absolutely attribute that to the easy flow sponge filters just because they're both aimed at the front so they're kind of pushing the water at the front of the tank and then it kind of goes down and then pushes the mulm to the back of the tank kind of the circular motion. I did notice that my new El Nino fern has a lot of plantlets growing which kind of looks a little bit messy but once I get a little bit big enough I'm probably going to remove the plantlets that are growing off of the leaves and then just glue them down to the same stone that the original Mama El Nino fern is uh, attached to. Overall I'm pretty happy with the balance of this tank. I still do get low amounts of algae that grow on the leaves of the larger plants as well as the glass. So I'm thinking I need a little bit of help in the form of nerite snails in order to help eat some of the algae just because I don't think the um, stiffidon goby and the uh, clown pleco are keeping up enough. Now that I have this routine down for the 10, 20 gallon high, I'm actually excited to start looking at one of my other aquariums, which you haven't even seen before, uh, unless you're maybe a member. And I had, remember I had that rimless 5.5 gallon aquarium? Well, I took that down. 
I have a 10 gallon tank in its place now and it's looking a little sad too. So I hope you all stick around and find out what I do to revamp the 10 gallon tank. See you guys in the next video. Bye.